Hey guys, so I've decided to create an evolution simulator. Basically, I want to create a world with some creatures and over time, the creatures evolve based on the changing environment. And I will be documenting my progress in this video series. So the very first thing that I did was I wrote a description or a vision for this project that you can see here. And then I went ahead and described a software development process that I'll be following. So basically, I'm going to be following a very lean, agile, iterative process. I'm going to focus on getting something up and running as fast as possible. As a matter of fact, you'll see that it only took me one day to get a basic simulator up. In the beginning, I don't want to worry about code quality, graphics, or sound. I can always refactor or restart later if I want to focus on creating a polished product. In this document, I also wrote down the tasks that I want to accomplish for the first iteration. To summarize, I just wanted to get some creatures moving around. I wanted them to be able to collect some food and I wanted them to be able to replicate after some time. Also, uh, if they don't have some food after a while, they should die. Now let's quickly go over the rules of the simulation. We have the creatures, we have the environment, we have food. The creatures and the environment have some parameters. The creature has mass, radius, which is basically how big that circle is, and energy. We'll talk about this later. The environment has just one parameter, the food spawn rate. So the creature uses energy by just staying still, by living, or it uses energy by moving. It uses more energy by moving than it does by staying still. So as a creature moves around, there is a chance that it will collide with food. When it does, it will consume the food and in turn, its energy will be increased. Now, the longer that a creature lives for, the more it will replicate because periodically, creatures will spawn an offspring. Each offspring that a creature spawns, the parameters of the offspring will initially be identical to the parent and then they will be randomly uh, adjusted a little bit. So they will be like their parents, except a little bit different. It's extremely important for me to note that the simulation will in the future get much more interesting I will introduce things like smarter movements, um, predators, a non-homogeneous environment. So in other words, I'm going to have different regions of the environment have different parameters like wind speed, friction, uh, basically realistic things so that we can see much more interesting creature, creatures evolving. For now, I just wanted to get the basic model up and running. I was able to implement the creature movement and replication fairly quickly. Here's another look. Next, I try to do some messing around because I wanted to encode a creature's mass with its color. So creatures have a couple of properties such as mass and volume. The volume you can see by how big the actual creature is, but the mass is encoded in the color. So I wanted to make uh, creatures with more mass have more color. Here's my first attempt at that. It looks okay, but it's actually buggy. It isn't doing what it's supposed to. And here's my second attempt at encoding uh, mass in color. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is the more mass something is, I want it to be lighter. The less mass, the darker. I still don't have it quite right, uh, but I'll get that right towards the end of the video.
Now that I had a single creature moving around and replicating, I wanted to spawn a bunch of them in a scene. So that's what you're seeing here. I've spawned quite a few creatures, they're moving randomly, and after some time, they replicate. Also, you can see that the parents die after a while. So I'll just let you guys see this for a little bit because it does look kind of cool. So additionally, what I've done here is you see those little green uh, squares? Those are food. When a creature bumps into a food, it eats the food. And when it eats the food, it gets to live longer. The longer that a creature lives for, the more offspring it creates. And the idea is, is that whenever a creature creates an offspring, that offspring is, inherits the mass and volume and speed of the parent with a little bit of randomness applied. So right now, these creatures, they travel outward in a random direction infinitely, so they never turn back. I wanted to stop this, I wanted to bound them. So my next task was to get them to turn back towards the center when they went off the screen, basically. And this was a lot more difficult than I had thought. I had to do a lot of debugging, a lot of Googling. Uh, I mean, so much work. This was hours of work and it was caused by me not understanding the uh, coordinate convention that Godot uses, basically. That's what it boiled down to. I'm very comfortable with linear algebra. I'm very comfortable with math. So I w I'm actually pretty mad at myself for not checking the the coordinate system that Godot uses. I kept on triple checking my map. Basically, all I had to do was when the uh, creature went off the screen, just make it look back towards the center and then it would move randomly towards the center again. So again, after hours and hours of debugging that I've sped up here for you, I figured out finally how to do it right around over here. So you see, the creature is going to be moving back towards the center now. Right about now. Now, of course, I have uh, made the bounding box much smaller, so the creature, because I wanted to make sure that it went back towards the center when it went out of bounds. This is just for my test case, but you can see that it's bouncing, and here I'm just uh, changing my nightlight settings a little bit. <laughs> but I'm really, really happy that I finally was able to get that um, turning back towards the center working. So once I got a single creature to turn back towards the center after it uh, went out of bounds, I went back to allowing them to move randomly because while I was trying to get that to work, I only moved them straight. So here again, I'm spawning lots of creatures. I'm allowing them to move randomly. And as you can see, once they go off the screen, they turn back towards the center. It looks kind of cool here because it looks like a big moving cloud. And I haven't optimized this at all. That's why you're seeing uh, all of this lag when I'm spawning these creatures. Also, there's another bug here. Uh, it's that all the things have the same shape, even though they have different radiuses. So here I'm just fixing a couple of bugs. Here I'm fixing the mass issue. So I had the mass issue wrong. And actually, oh, I was trying to fix the uh, shape issue because all of these little creatures, they have a different radius, but what you're seeing is the same size and that's false. That's false. <laughs> so I'm trying to work on that right now. I'm making every, uh, creature that's a different size actually show that they're a different size. And here, I finally got that to work. So I got both the mass and the size to work. So I'm gonna pause for a second here because I wanna mention something. So here, I was able to fix the mass issue. So the darker things are less mass, lighter things are more mass. And also, you can see that the different creatures have different sizes, whereas before they were all using the same size, even though they had internally a different radius parameter. So I fixed both of those here. So as you can see, uh, the black creatures, so the ones that are 
lower mass, they tend to be faster. So the faster creatures are, they seem to be dominating. So remember, the darker the uh, tint of the creature, the faster, the lower the mass, therefore the faster they are. And as you can see, those are the creatures that our, this particular environment has selected for. So that is natural selection happening right there. That's it for the day one video. I plan on uh, keeping on making these daily uh, logs of me working on this evolution simulator game. I hope you guys like it. If you have any suggestions, um, any features that you want to see, uh, or if you have any ideas or any solutions um, for the problems that I'm having, I would really appreciate that. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.